April 21st marks the fifth anniversary of Record Store Day, a nationwide project to promote struggling brick-and-mortar music shops. Across the country, independent stores offer exclusive one-of-a-kind recordings as a way to bring customers in their door. According to Matt Moffat, co-owner of Washington, D.C. Smash Records, it's been a great success. It is the busiest day of the year, and we ring the most money in our register on Record Store Day, which is very helpful. Smash isn't just selling new CDs. Like good businessmen in a tough economy, they've diversified into used albums, hard-to-find vinyl, t-shirts, posters, and vintage clothing. Stores that only sell music are few and far between. Yeah. And, and then on top of that, stores that only sell just new music, I don't know if I, can, I could even think of one. What's necessary for record store survival has put them directly in the path of a threat that far outstrips a music-hungry teen with a BitTorrent account we're talking about City Hall. The powers that be in the nation's capital have decided that record stores in D.C. must now acquire a different business license, one that is particularly burdensome and expensive. Uh, basically, they want us to get a pawn shop license, yeah. all these stores. So, And in order to get that, there's just a million hoops that everyone has to jump through. The regulations which I have here um, for secondhand dealer class A and class B licenses um, are, are particularly onerous. The toughest challenge for us would be that every item that someone walks in to sell, we have to catalog. We would have to send like a sheet to a detective to say, this is what we bought. Um, this is how much we bought it for. Then we would have to hold it, uh, the items, for uh, I think two weeks. The investigators, detectives can come in at any time and they should have an, a current list. Uh, we should be able to tell them how, when, why, where we got it for every item. Then, and this is kind of the nuttiest part for me, whoever buys said items, we also have to take down their information. So I'm supposed to do that for every item that we sell. And that's not the end of it. Under the secondhand store license, owners must get fingerprinted, pay twice as much as a general business license, or face a fine of up to $2,000 a day for noncompliance. And make no mistake, when D.C. is trying to stamp out business, they mean business. Wednesday, April 4th, um, a number of businesses in Adams Morgan and also um, on U Street were visited by MPD, the Metropolitan Police Department, along with uh, an inspector from the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs, or DCRA. They um, came in in a very aggressive way um, and told them that they did not have the right business license that they needed a second-hand business license. And they said that they would be shut down um, if they didn't get the right business license within seven days. Merchants like Moffat and business advocates like Barton aren't taking it lying down. They've pulled together and they're pushing back. It's never easy to fight City Hall, but they're giving it their best shot. And after all, they have nothing to lose but their livelihoods. Uh, it'll take a rewrite of the, of the regulations. Um, um, we could do that first by emergency legislation and then you know, hopefully by permanent legislation. So, I mean, that's going to take some time, but um, we've started the process and we've got DCRA's attention, so we're hopeful. It's, it just seems like just so heavy-handed um, that it could easily just, just destroy businesses like mine. Well, we're pulling for you. Oh, thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks.